only photographer in the group, Oladimeji, uses his lens as a map to navigate the duality of human nature and the hard questions surrounding the creation story. I was asking about my own life and the lives of um, other people. Um, I noticed that um, great men, especially um, people that had gone out of their way to conquer the world and to rule their environments, while they would um, do such things and then in the end um, they start to feel a source of emptiness and then they, set, they start to look for deeper meanings to their life. And um, I came about the work of a Jewish rabbi, a philosopher also, that wrote a book called um, The Lonely Man of Faith. And in it, he described there being two accounts of the creation of man, one in which man was made as a majestic being who sees everything from a utilitarian point of view, which means that he doesn't go into any relationship unless there's something in it for him or her. And then the second account of the creation of man, man was made as a lonely person who seeks out companionship in um, everything he does. So what he said, what he, he found out was that um, man tends to go through his life as um, a majestic being. That is the way man prefers to live. Man prefers to go into relationships that uh, there's something in need for him. Man um, attempts to conquer his world. Man attempts to subdue his world. And um, if you look all around, that is what everybody preaches also. I mean, everybody tries to show a forceful face in everything they do. The most conceptual and experimental of this bond is Seijiro, whose physiognomical distinction series questions the act of understanding people just by the way they appear. Physiognomical distinction, um, questioning the act of judging people by merely looking at their physical appearance. I think uh, beauty is a thing of the heart, not the thing of the face. Because I'm black does not mean I'm bad. Because uh, I have a tattoo does not make me bad boy. Because I have uh, a threat does not make me rascal or does not make me bad. I think uh, it is just a thing uh, of the heart, not, uh, not to judge people by the way they look physically. I think we should start appreciating people no matter how they look. I see life as being a long journey rather than being a destination and I travel life with my art. My signature personifies cars as bringing entities in tattooing uh, in all emotional relationships. They have all brought their different skills to the Rayleigh Art Gallery which has given them the necessary support to produce these works of art. Catching art young, always exciting to see fresh blood with so much potential. And we'll be keeping our eyes peeled for more hands that got talent. And that's why we always say, let's keep the creative energy charge. Go to any of our platforms and let's see what you're doing, images or performances. Just put them up. And talking about performances, this one is rather interesting. I'll tell you more about it in a moment. Join us again. On July the 21st, 1944, in Lagos. Though she had her formal education in a missionary school, she was raised to appreciate and have a deep understanding of her Igbo background and heritage. As a result, she became a conscious stark contrast of African culture to Western values which helped shape her view of life. And these are your works of art for this week. We'll begin with this work of art from Ayodele Shalom. She calls it Itaiga. She says she did it with Schneider pens. She says the whole concept of the work is the ability to trust your intuition. The colors are wild, but she used them anyway, ignoring the rules and just going with the flow. So you see the tiger in the work, and she says it's that time to roar. 
Olufemi Adedeji has this one titled Goddess done with paper and a pencil. It's a black and white concept. He says, I did this then. Victor Oledibe has this one. It's a photography. At least some fresh air here. Break away from the paintings we've been receiving. He calls it races. Then Dari Popola has two of them. The first one is market, it's oil paint on canvas. While the next is where is your true love? Done with oil paint on canvas. Then Steve Aka has this rural landscape with a farmhouse. He says he used a lot of sketches in this work of art and it's done with new media. Chiso Mukeke has this one she calls spiritual chart. It's a little girl, very cute little girl I must say, and is done with bead on board. <laughs> Timothy Ujandanye has this one he calls Okoyong. It talks about the title, the Queen of Okoyong. This piece attempts to reconstruct the vintage image of Mary Slessor who served in the swamps of Okoyong at the time when multiple births were considered a curse. To find the odds, she braced the challenges of a difficult terrain and a lot of mosquitoes, choosing to live as an outcast in the evil forest where twins were being abandoned to die. Of course, all that is in the history books, but she is being remembered by Timothy today with his oil pastel on embossed paper. Ayodele Shalom has this one. She calls it Many Faces. She believes that this piece represents the different aspects of man. Sometimes it could be creative, deep, jealous, deceptive, and utterly stupid. But through it all, it just shows that they are human after all, the different sides of man. And those are your works of art for this week. We do encourage you to keep them coming.